What I have prepared today is going to kind of fit in with something, with what I read over here. This is kind of cool. I, sort of, I certainly like what all this says, especially the, uh, the be silly part. Looks good. And I think this is going to fit very much with what I have prepared. There was a place I worked at where a guy had a sign that said, God gave us a sense of humor for what we are and an imagination for what we are not. Well, as funny as that can be, and it is pretty amusing, can anybody say that a uh, sense of humor and an imagination cannot be helpful, especially at a time when, um, when things are bad? During times of sadness and loneliness, like many of you, I've had bad times in my life. In my younger years, many of them were brought on by my own behavior. But there certainly has been, you know, things that have happened, tragedies and incidents that I have had no control over. There are times I found it hard to keep going and talking to you people, I know I'm not alone. But I have, and so have you. And have you, have you ever asked yourself why? I mean, the answer is pretty simple. It's because we have no choice. And as we said, everything in life is a learning experience. What I learned from things, that, from bad times, is that the more, more I mope and feel sorry for myself, the worse I feel. That's not to say that there's not a time for maybe stepping aside, a time for healing. But there's also got to be a time to lift yourself up and get back in the race. There's a time to get going again. And I also believe that laughter is the best medicine. Now, I will admit that you know, my sense of humor may be, may be a, a little off the wall at times. OK, maybe a lot off the wall. <laughs> but, but it's me. It's what I am. It's what I do. Even when I have medical appointments, I leave them laughing. Might as well go in and have a little fun. You've got to be there. Um, my dermatologist and my dental hygienist look forward to my visits because I leave them laughing. I might too, if it wasn't for the copays. <laughs> and having been a blood donor since I was 18, mostly with my left arm, there's a lot of scar tissue there. So whenever I, you know, either if it's, whether it's a blood appointment, you know, for physical or if I'm donating blood, I have to kind of tell them that there's so much, so many holes there that it's been punctured so much that, that if I don't want them, they're gonna, they could hit a dry well and it's gonna be very, very slow. So I always tell them that there's no blood left in my left arm. It's like all been drained out. Only once did some girl say to me, well, if you didn't have any blood left in your arm, you'd have to get it amputated. I didn't like push the issue because I, you know, I do want to kind of keep it. And, um, <laughs> and uh, but I did think to myself, get a sense of humor, get a life. <laughs> I mean, we all know what kind of people we like to be around. I mean, do you like to be around grouchy people that are always whining and complaining? I mean, th these people could brighten up a room just by leaving it. <laughs> I like to be around people that I can talk to, laugh with, people that I can help, and people that can help me. I was told by a troubled friend one time that she hates to let her guard down and have fun because when times go bad, it makes it that much worse. I mean, bad times are gonna come around and good times can come back again. I mean, and the thing is, it's such a sad way to go through life. And I'm sure there's other people like that. And the thing is, if you spend the good times worrying that there's going to be a bad time somewhere in the future, you can't ever really relax and enjoy life. Nobody is excluded from bad times. But if you spend, you know, you just got to try to enjoy times whenever you can. I get philosophy out of movies and songs. 
not all of them, not, probably not very many of them, but there are certain things that do stand out in my mind, that do stay with me. You must all remember the movie, you must all know the movie, The Christmas Story. It's on every Christmas Eve and right through Christmas Day. It's an interesting story. It's about a little boy named Ralphie who has a tendency to, um, has a very vivid, very wild imagination. And more than anything in the world, he wanted a BB gun for Christmas. And everybody kept saying, you shit your eye out, kid. But he wanted to be his hero, the Red Ranger. And in this story, burglars come to the door wearing black, white stripes, black and white striped suits with masks, causing his father, mother, and little brother to hide in fear. But there is no reason to fear, because he's the Red Ranger and he scares them away with his BB gun. The movie's been way overplayed, but it is a good, it is a good example of a little boy's imagination. Story writers, as I was saying, story writers and songwriters do write things, a lot of stuff about what they see and feel. If it's not fiction, they are telling you about experiences in their own life. If it's fiction, they're telling you what your imagination tells them. I have a good imagination, not quite to the level it was when I was younger. That's probably because most places I'm going to go in my life, I've already been. I don't mean geographical locations, but moreover, things I've been involved in, jobs, volunteer organizations, and things like that. Children have great imaginations. And I believe nature provides that in children because that they, have, they have their whole life ahead of them. Their imagination allows them to be different things. That will help them learn, grow, and develop by playing out various roles in their minds that they could become later in life. It's their dreams. And in, their, and in the minds of children, they are the hero that leads an army to victory, the pitcher that throws a no-hitter, the hitter that hits the walk-off home run that wins the game, the star quarterback, the rock star. Regardless of how well or poorly they perform academically or in sports, and how they stand with the popularity with their classmates, in their minds they are successful. And though it may not be a true reality, it is their reality. And it helps give them an element of peace. Socially speaking, high school can be very difficult. It's a time when you're a cross between a kid and an adult. And it's also a time when you're, you take things very emotionally. The brain isn't fully developed, and comments that are said to you or things you say to other people can be very hurtful. You're very emotionally sensitive at that time in your life, and you want to be part of things that your classmates are part of. Insults and rejections can be taken to heart. There's a lot of competition, and many kids find that they can lift themselves up by stepping on somebody else. Were you the homecoming queen? Were you the star football player? How were you viewed by your classmates? How did you view yourself? I had a teacher back in college that said one time, and this was one of the things that stayed with me. He said it's the three U's. The way other people see you, the way you see yourself, and the way you really are. That's pretty interesting, but I could expand on it. It's true, but I could expand on it because not everybody sees you the same way. Can you say you always see yourself the same way? This is where meditation can help because what meditation is really about is to get to know the person inside you. It's to get to know you. 
Another thing children's imaginations are noted for are imaginary friends. Did you have imaginary friends? This is especially common for those that tend to be loners. Their imaginary friends don't argue and ridicule them like others do. And though they may not be a physical reality, they are that boy or girl's reality. They keep them from being lonely and make them feel good. Story writers and songwriters might talk about them in their stories or songs. Most people never do. They keep their imaginary world to themselves. <clears throat> and that's okay, because the important thing is that it helps them find peace of mind. Neil Diamond did a song about his imaginary friend called Shiloh. If you're not familiar with the song, call it up on the internet. You might even relate to it. In the song, he's telling about his childhood loneliness. The words go, Shiloh, when I was young, I used to call your name. When no one else would come, Shiloh, you always came. And we played. Through the years, he kept his dreams to himself. But then a young girl with fire made him trust someone else. He fell blindly for her. But she left him with nothing but a note. And the last line of the song says, Shiloh, when I was young, I used to call your name. When no one else would come, Shiloh, you always came. Come today. Like so many others, Neil Diamond gave us a lot of great and inspirational, meaningful and wonderful music. Songs and movies can touch your heart. They bring you back to places and events in your mind, in your life, and in some cases, who you wish you could be. They can entice your imagination, and you know well that children's imaginations are their hopes and dreams for the future. Our imaginations can be our hopes and dreams too. Not the dreams we're trying to recall when that annoying alarm clock goes off, but the ones that encompass our thoughts throughout the day. There are hopes and aspirations. Whether or not they come true in the physical world, they are a reality to us, and they help us get through our lives. I spoke of high school being rough socially, and students stepping on others to lift themselves up. But this happens in jobs, and in volunteer organizations too. It's a fact of life. Even when you know you've done a good job, when you've performed well, there are people who will criticize you. It may be out of jealousy and to make themselves look better by bringing you down. And if you let them, they will bring you down to their level. Having been a little league coach for five years, worked in some different jobs, been a Boy Scout leader registered with the Boy Scouts of America for 20 years, a member of the Springfield Turn Marine, that along with two other people ran the Oktoberfest, I have been the subject of controversy in many cases. So I know how that can be. But I had the time of my life, especially coaching, camping, hiking, designing, and running summer programs, teaching mirror badge classes, and helping families put eagle banquets together when their son reached the pinnacle of success. And if I knew in my early middle years, my early middle age, what I know now, I wouldn't hesitate to sign on again. I've, had, I've got great memories of it. There were stressful times, sleepless nights with stupid squabbles. but I had tremendous support of the kids and their parents. And the wonderful memories of the things I got to do will be with me always. One more set of lines in a song I'll mention before I close is from the Rolling Stones song, Ruby Tuesday. <laughs> now, I realize many of the lines in the Rolling Stones songs 
really wouldn't be very appropriate to quote from up here. But Song Ruby Tuesday, this is, and uh, this is not to do at a restaurant. So this is about, it's about a girl that chose us to be totally free and protect herself from hurt by never staying in one place. In the last verse of the song, Mick Jagger sings, there's no time to lose, I heard her say. Catch your dreams before they slip away. Dying all the time. Lose your dreams and you'll lose your mind. Ain't life unkind. I'll leave that to everybody's personal opinion and interpretation. But do catch your dreams before they slip away. Because they might just be the thing that keeps you from losing your mind. Especially when times get bad. Allow your imagination to comfort you with your dreams. And as it says up here, bring joy and laughter to others with a crazy sense of humor. Love, laugh, and enjoy life as much as you can, whenever you can, for as long as you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cliff. Thank you.